Hey, greetings YouTube, performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're going to be doing a first video in a series of machines that I'm going to call retrospective reviews. Um, and well, I guess technically the Kirby G3 I did was a, the first video in that series. But anyways, we're going to showcase certain bits of vacuum history and certain special machines that may not even be available anymore. Uh, but they're interesting, so I want to show them to you. Uh, and this has been made possible by our Patreon supporters who are so generous, who not only get exclusive content, but they help keep this channel going. Let's talk about Bosch. Bosch is not a name we hear in the U.S. a lot in terms of vacuum cleaners, but we get Bosch tools and Bosch fuel injectors. We did get Bosch vacuums for a while. Bosch vacuums were imported in the early 2000s for a limited time, probably about five, 10 years. And that's it, that's all we ever got from any accounts, anything I've ever seen. Uh, now, if you know of any older, please comment below. I'd love, love to hear about it. And Bosch was distributed through a company called Star for Parts who would later become ESCO. And when ESCO acquired them was about when they stopped selling these machines. So, you know, maybe 2007, 2008-ish. And I never really thought much about the Bosch machines because they were not as nice as the other European counterparts. This machine, at the time, would have competed with a 500 series Mila, which would have been closest in price to this machine, and a 5000 series Mila. I have videos on a 5000 series Mila. You can go check those out. I'll try to put it here. But, so this machine had to compete, and it sold for about 500 bucks. Um, where, you know, the 5000 series Milas started at about 600 bucks for straight suction, and with, if you want a power head, you're talking seven, eight hundred dollars for a Mila with a power head. So, there are a lot of similarities. And I'm going to keep this red Mila around, because it, it does show some of the similarities, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So let me give you a tour of what's on this. This is a Bosch Formula Electro Duo. This is the least expensive machine you can get with uh, an electric power head. Now, we have a speed control, we have a carry handle. So the carry handle is also the on and off switch right here, so you can press on that. Um, unfortunately, mine I got secondhand, as that's basically the only way you can get these things now. Uh, so the plug's been replaced and some things have been chopped up, unfortunately, in there. But this has that Electrolux style uh, cord rewind where you just kind of pull it and yank it. You have three casters. Um, the body is not ABS. It's something else, this part. The top is ABS, but not the main body. We have a full bag check indicator right there. The tools come out. And there were a few other vacuums where these tools would come out as well. And then you had a crevice dusting and upholstery tool right there. And then right here, integrated, this is just one piece that's been relief cut to make it bend. Um, we have some other stuff in here. And I think this is where a lot of things become very German, very similar to some other vacuums. We, when you pull this bag out, it will self seal. So there's a door, as you can see, that would close this bag. There's a Bosch bag. You have pre-motor filter, then you have a HEPA filter. And the HEPA filter doesn't have a gasket on it. The gasket's actually in the machine. So I think it was a good part, a good time where we'll start talking about it versus its competitor. So to try and be nice to it, we're going to put a 500 series machine next to it which also has a red self-sealing bag. It can have an optional HEPA filter, pre-motor filter. You can see some similarities right there. The carrying handles are in the same spots. And I don't believe either of these manufacturers really copied each other. Again, another similarity were the boxes of bags. I have here the Mila bags that would have been sold alongside the Bosch bags. Uh, they're so similar, it's scary. And I always thought that that was very strange just how similar they come packed. You know, you open them up, and they even come with a clear strap around them. And 
Uh, it's not in the box, but there is a pre-motor filter that comes in there as well. And these are the original Bosch bags to the machine. And again, let's compare them to an FJM. These are basically the same. Both of these would have had onboard tools very similar in size. So all this stuff, there are a lot of similarities. They both have a speed control, a parking space. They both have three casters. This has a parking space on the side. So we have a lot of similarities between the Bosch and the Mila at the time. Another point I would like to make is they both chose this will work accessories. Why Mila used this proprietary 217 nozzle on a lot of their vacuums, the Bosch used the CBK 380 nozzle. Again, they're very similar. Um, again, these were both not made by either of these companies. I'd like to point out one other thing and then we'll put the Mila away. I'm not trying to make this a Bosch versus Mila video, but you know, a lot more people have seen a Mila. The accessories were both 34 millimeter. And really the only thing that was different about the Bosch was the electrical connection. Though you can put the Mila accessories on the end of the Bosch. So again, lots of similarities there. Now, the wand is peculiar in that the telescope wand lever is in the front, not in the rear. Plastic tips, so you're not gonna scratch your furniture. So talking about the EBK280, uh, um, I rather like this nozzle. A friend of mine called it an ice cream sandwich because uh, it, it kind of does look like an ice cream sandwich. But you can see this is very similar to a 217 Mila nozzle. Um, the brush roller is different. Some things are the same. The motor is the same. The gear uh, over here is the same. So all this stuff, like I said, is good. What is unique uh, is that the brush roller floats, which means I can actually push this on a higher pile carpet, which is something I like about this nozzle. And then it just all kind of goes back together. Very easy to maintain compared to the 217, which isn't hard to maintain either. Now, the hose, this hose is not unique to Bosch. There are other vacuums that have used this hose. Um, and you can plug the nozzle directly in if you wanted to. Got a big gas pump hose, just a dip switch here. Um, in fact, the hose isn't even marked Bosch. You can see the company who made it right there. That's the same company who makes it for a few other companies as well. So all this is delightful in terms of how it goes together. So inside this machine is kind of interesting because there's a lot of cost cutting measures compared to something like a Mila or other things from Europe or some of the Philips. You can see that they were originally sold with a 2000 watt motor in Europe. Of course, here in the US, we wouldn't have that. Um, there is sound deadening material. You can see everything is kind of one piece. It very much reminds me of a Mila S2000 series machine in terms of how it's made. It, Everything's kind of snapped together. There's only like three screws holding it together. Um, I don't really have any problems with the way it's constructed, especially when it was sold at the $500 price point. I would be ecstatic if they would bring this machine back today and maybe just equip an EBK360 with it. This would be like a number one selling machine in the U.S. market. It really is a shame we don't get these anymore. I also wanted to note this is a sealed system, so if you did have allergies, this would have been great for you at the time. As always, we're going to test the working vacuum. Let's see what it does. So there's sealed right around 65, and then again about 39, 38 working. I will say this was meant for compact homes. You can see that the cord is extremely short. About 20 feet or so. 
Well, we're gonna put it through its usual pickup test. Now, this is a different carpet than I usually use, being where the vacuum's at right now. This really was designed for this style of carpet, so it should do it just fine. And as always, we're using a studio mic, so you're gonna hear the real sound of the vacuum cleaner. Um, well, it kind of made short work of everything, but this little piece of pet hair just didn't quite line up with the machine. No cat litter. No flower. So yeah, just that little piece of pet hair it seemed to miss. That's probably the most boring pickup test I've done in a long time uh, on any machine. It, do I even need to describe that? It picked everything up just fine. It's more than adequately powered. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little retrospective look into the Bosch canister vacuums that came to the U.S. There's about two or three other models that came to the U.S. as well. Um, I do have one of the bigger ones with the full-size power head. We'll be doing a video on that. Thanks to our Patreon supporters who have helped us acquire all this stuff. Um, the past few weeks, there's been a lot going on, and if you're not part of Patreon, that's cool. I'd encourage you to check it out. Uh, but there's lots of exclusive content I post for Patreon supporters, uh, one of which is the repair and all the details that went into getting this machine and some of the other things. Uh, we also have a Discord server, a Vacuum Talk Discord server, that's free to join for anybody who wants to talk about vacuums. I'll put a link below. Go check that out. Um, please like, share, turn on those notification bells so you know when our next video comes out. And have yourself a wonderful day.